there is no such thing as illegal immigrants in Wakanda because they don't allow immigrants in the first place. Well, because... Refugee programs. You let the refugees in, they bring their problems with them. And then Wakanda is like everywhere else. As I said, this is the Wakandan's version of a single story. However, there are a few Wakandan characters that see through this negative xenophobic impact of this stereotype. These are Nakia, Uncle Jobu, and most prominently his son Eric Killmonger. Eric wants to change things and on his way he robs, although I can't really say he got robbed because he said, you know what, yeah, just watch the scene, just watch the scene. The first impression you get from Eric Killmonger may be, ah, it's this big black buff puppy with the rust and tan boots. Come on, what does this guy know, right? <laughs> what does this guy know, right? <laughs> well, Killmonger later turns out to know more than his appearance may suggest. But for a few moments, he plays along to this stereotype, which allows him vital time to infiltrate the museum and poison the British historian. But as soon as he breaks character, Fula tribe, I believe. Nah. I beg your pardon. It was taken by British soldiers in Benin, but it's from Wakanda, and it's made out of Vibranium. He clearly has done his research. He is able to identify the artifacts and exactly where they came from. You feel something shady when the English historian suspects him of going to rob the place, well, until he immediately lays one of the best damn lines in recent film history. Don't trip. I'm gonna take it off your hands for you. These items aren't for sale. How do you think your ancestors got these? You think they paid a fair price? Or did they take it like they took everything else? Obviously referring to the 19th century African colonization where the Europeans grabbed everything from the land, minerals, wildlife, artifacts, resources to even Brianne Hunter's bones. Seriously, how can you say I'm stealing something that still originally belongs to me. <laughs> Just because of this sharp rhetoric question, the context of the whole heist is reshaped from being a criminal offense to even being a heroic pan-African act. The Palestinian poet Murid Baghouti writes that if you want to dispossess a people, the simplest way to do it is to tell their story and to start with secondly. Start the story with the arrows of the Native Americans and not with the arrival of the British, and you have an entirely different story. Start the story with the failure of the African state and not with the colonial creation of the African state, and you have an entirely different story. This is what Eric does. As a pan-Africanist who considered all African descendants as one family, Kilmonga retells his alternate story of the single story not from the perspective of the single story of the glorious European conquest, but from a different starting point and the perspective of his wronged African ancestors, who unfairly lost their resources to the white men during colonization. Particularly as an African descendant yourself, you gain a lasting empathy for him, because you see the reasoning behind his argument even when he is doing heinous things to achieve his objectives. We'll return to Kumonga later on in the video. Section B The Single Story of Beauty Standards. 